don't get too deep in it. Um, in chemistry, uh, you learned in one of your lessons about an element called a catalyst. A catalyst. A catalyst is that element that you put it into, uh, uh, you put it in with other other things, other substances, and no matter how corrosive or no matter how reactive the other things are, the catalyst kicks things off but it never changes its essential character. The catalyst remains the same. Wherever you are, you are that catalyst. You are the thing that is put in a place, and yet never do you lose your essential character or your essential mission, but everything around you changes. Amen? Amen. So there needs to be some changes around you. Now, essential means that your stance... But it also, you know, as we go through life, you know, you are rubbed and you are, 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 are shaped and you are fashioned through experiences. So that's not what I'm talking about. I mean the core essence of who you are as a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen? We never move forward from that. So you are a catalyst. I'm going to talk about a lady who was a great catalyst. Great catalyst. And um, we've never, I've never preached about her on Mother's Day. Because, you know, there's a lot of things we don't know about her, but I just want to kind of take her story. We want to look at it today. Amen? Do that today. Do that with me. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for your word that you are going to give us this morning, the lessons that you're going to teach us, the truth that you will deposit within our spirits. We love you and give you glory, give you praise today in the mighty, in the unparalleled name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before I start, I have to then welcome back uh, Sister Mary. Amen. God bless you. We miss you dearly. Stand up so everybody can see your wonderful face. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Um, you know I'm going to talk about you today, right? You know about you. Okay. All right, you're right here on time. Thank you. All right. So I want to talk about uh, influencing your hood. So let's go to Acts chapter 9. And this story is kind of tucked in, and it's kind of like God is doing, not kind of, but God is doing some things, and in the midst of him doing some things and leading his disciples to do even greater things, for some reason, Luke kind of throws this story and it kind of happens right here. It's like two miracles, and then God then goes, and Peter goes on to meet Cornelius. The lady I want to talk about, her name is Dorcas or Tabitha. Dorcas or Tabitha, and her name, name means gazelle. And if you think about a gazelle and the, one, the species of gazelle that would be very, very familiar to us is the Thompson gazelle, which is about 24 inches at the shoulders, about, you know, about 40 or 50 inches long, probably not that long. But anyway, uh, very graceful, light on their feet, beautiful animal, always flirting around, always busy, never can stand still. And so it's interesting that in the Bible that her name means gazelle. Matter of fact, um, they have a, a particular species of that type of antelope that's called a Dorcas gazelle. It's just really interesting. So let's go to our, um, let's go to our text. We're going to go to Acts chapter 9, starting verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lida, which was near Joppa, about 10 miles away. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please, come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Isn't this situation sort of like a situation in Mark with Jesus? Hmm. Y'all know that situation? Y'all remember that one? The 12-year-old girl that died? Yeah, this is similar technique here. Interesting. Turning toward the dead woman, and she was dead, okay? She was dead. She wasn't swooning. She was dead, okay? Turning toward the dead woman, Peter said, Tabitha, get up, girl. And she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. Little brown translation right there. Just a little bit. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called the believers and the 
and the widows and presented her to them alive. Very important. This became known all over Joppa and many people believed in the Lord because of this event. Oh man, amen. Oh, okay. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. And of course, as you know, that ends basically chapter 9 and it moves just clandestinely into chapter 10 where then Peter is used to, uh, to be the catalyst whereby the Spirit of God comes on the Samaritans in, uh, in chapter 10. Okay, here is what you need to know. Here is the primary point of all that we're trying to do this morning. God intended for you, or God intended for us, to leave our marks on this generation. God intended you to leave a mark on this generation. God never intended you to just live and exist and just be who you are and be nice and kind and whatever. No, God has a purpose for you being here at this time. You being alive right now is very important. It's very important and it's very critical. You are critical to our society. Don't, don't look at a president. Don't look at a governor. Don't look at community services and all that other stuff. You know what? It's you. Amen. It's you. Because within you is the Spirit of God. Isn't it interesting that here, just a little bit here, notice that one of the things, one of the first identifiers, and we don't know a whole lot about Dorcas. We don't know a whole lot. We don't know. We, there's some speculations. And so let me give you some speculations that kind of, that will kind of couch how I'm going to approach it this morning. First of all, she lived in Joppa, which was a seafaring, it was, I think it was the second largest seaport that the, uh, in, in, in Israel at that time. And so um, there are a lot of seafaring folks that lived there. And you know, their ships weren't as good as our ships today. And so they were on the, on the, on the brink of the Mediterranean Sea. And many times the people were shipwrecked. And of course, you know, many times people drowned. And so in this town, for some reasons, we see that there is a, a listing, or at least we are made aware that there are a number of widows there, okay? That, that's very evident. It's made in the text. And usually anywhere else, it kind of refers to widows, but it doesn't kind of point them out as a population, okay? Here, it seems as if the text points them out as a population. There were a lot of widows there. And it's then also believed that then Tabitha, or Dorcas, was then also a widow, Okay, uh, so, and, and we'll get to that in a, point, uh, a minute here, why that's very important. But here in this town, one of the things that you need to know about her is that this is the only time that I can remember in Scripture where a woman was called a disciple. <laughs> and it just it wasn't that there was a woman who lived in Joppa. They said a woman who was what? A disciple. And what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Jesus, but it's from the Greek word methetos. And methetos basically means that someone who is a lifelong learner. See, a disciple doesn't believe that they have got it. A disciple believes that they are in pursuit of it. So today as you sit here as a disciple, you are in pursuit of it. You don't have it. Paul did not have it. We are in pursuit of it. And many times in life, our pursuit is sometimes better than others. Say amen. amen. And you know, when you say amen now, you know what that means. Yes. <laughs> means that I own it, I believe it. Yep, that is true. It's mine. I've accepted it. That's what amen means. Don't just say be amen to encourage the preacher. Amen. <laughs> say amen because that's what you're going to hold on to. So, here we have this woman in this place. And isn't it amazing? Isn't God something that we hear about this woman? She's a disciple. And we know that she's doing a lot of wonderful things for people. I mean, when you want to have a neighbor like Dorcas? When you want to have a Dorcas in your hood? Amen. You want her to live next door? No, she sold. Think about that. Think, and then we see the end how when she died and they were like having her wake and Peter had shown up and how she, they were just saying all the clothes that she made for them. And actually, so many, as you kind of read the text and various um, translations of the text and so on, it almost looks like not only did she make outer garments, but she also made undergarments for these women. And so they were going and showing Peter all the stuff that Dorcas had made for them. Okay? So uh, isn't it amazing what a little needle can do? How impactful 
a needle can be, a sewing needle. Now, if I had one up here, many of us even sitting in the front row, you couldn't see it. Amen? And then, uh, how many of y'all know that when you get older, it's more difficult to thread a needle? <laughs> okay, side story, side story. I was sewing something the other, uh, probably about a, about a month ago. And I went, and I was look, looking at that, and I'm going like, you know, so then I have to take my glasses off to see. Amen? So... So it didn't used to be that way 20 some years ago, but now I take a glass to see. So anyway, um, and so I was looking and Evelyn, you know, has a sewing kit and I was looking through there and I was going through there and I wasn't looking for, because you know, they have various thicknesses of needles. I don't know anything about that. I'm a dude. <laughs> All I know is a needle's a needle, right brothers? Yes. Everett, you better not talk to me about the different sizes of needles, brother. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so all I know is a needle is a needle, okay? But one thing I do know about the one, one, one distinguishing, one distinguishing facet that's very important is I look for the one that has the biggest O. Who said I? Who said that? Who corrected me? You know it's a hole to me. Why do they call it an I? Anyway, thank you. You're right. So anyway, I look for the one with the biggest I. <laughs> and then, and then, and then what, get, what makes you mad is that when you get it right there and the thread is a little frayed, and then, it, and then it goes over there and over here. So you got part of it in and part of it not in. And you know me, I'm just too impatient for that. So I pull it, and then it come, just comes apart. Anyway, back to the story. Isn't it amazing how powerful just a little needle can become yes. when it is put to use? But, it, but, 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 but what's even stranger about the text is that we learn so many wonderful things about her, that she's a wonderful woman. She dies. Isn't that like God? I mean, like, come on, God is going to Why her? God, we can think of a whole lot of other people we would want to submit a list. But not her. Not her. I mean, dies, gets sick, and dies. And so the community then gets busy. They prepare her body for burial. They wash her, they dress her, they have her laying in a room. And then they find out that Pete is 10 miles away. And I don't know how it happened, you know. It's just wonderful to be a part of a supportive Christian community with people who are empowered and seeking God and have faith in God and believe that God does miracles. You ought to catch that. Anyway, okay, move on. Okay. Yes, we did. That just went right over. Anyway, so something happened, and they decided to go get Pete. They sent two dudes to go get Pete. Now, I don't know what they had in mind. The Bible never tells us what they had in mind. They just went to go get Pete. And they convinced Peter somehow to come back with them. And I don't know what their conversations were. I don't know what they told Peter. I don't, we, we have no idea, and we have no insight into their conversation. But then Peter comes, and then they take him up to the room. And we still have no idea what's going to happen. Or why they called Peter there. Maybe some of us would think that maybe they called Pete there because they wanted Pete to breathe a few words. You know how you want the preacher to say something nice and preach everybody into heaven? Yes. <laughs> it must be the fog this morning. <laughs> you know how they want to, we want the preacher to preach here? Yeah, we listening, listening, listening. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Somebody said, well, maybe we can bring Pete here and Peter can raise him from the dead. Uh, as I'm kind of thinking back, um, that was Jesus. That wasn't Pete. Hmm. Interesting here. And then another thing that I'm wondering that's on my mind is like, oh my goodness. You mean in this community, no one else has ever died before? Surely people were dying every day. But for some reason, there was no rush to go get Pete or any of the other disciples. For some reason, when Tabitha Dorcas died, it was a killer to the community. They couldn't live without her. Go get Pete. 
What do you want Pete to do? We don't know. Go get Pete. And they travel and convince Peter to come back with them. Took him upstairs and they were showing all the garments that she made and they were crying and so on. And I don't know what happened and when it happened. All of a sudden, Pete said, you know what? It's time for me to do something here. You know, this woman was influential in this community. But I want you to see how her influence opened the door for an even greater influencer. Amen. Pete said, y'all get out. <laughs> y'all gotta go. I got some business to do right here. Y'all, y'all gotta go. Get out. Wasn't even in his house. <laughs> Some people get out. You know, I'm sure they just left. Some of us would have said, what? I'm going to be right now. I, I, can you imagine that? Someone telling you to get out of the room? You know, you know folks got attitudes. Not is. Amen? Amen. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Maybe somebody you know. Seeing the mirror right now and then. Anyway, Pete tells him to get out. Prays, then looks toward her and says, girl, get up. You're not done here. I thank you so much for your service because what you have done has changed the way that people see God. And now because of your life and because of your sacrifice and because of your death and because of your surrender, God's going to open up this place and he's going to save so many people. Because the story of your life is going to be told. I want you to know something about the story of Dorcas. Do you know that even to this day, there are many, there are a number of Dorcas uh, chapters, part of the Dorcas society. And many churches their women's ministry is named the Dorcas Ministry. Interesting. It's a woman we don't preach a whole lot about. It's a woman that we don't really know much about. But what we do know is that she was a kind woman. It's something about compassion, not only for women, but for God's people. Because the kindness that was in her did not come from her, but it came from the Spirit of God in her that worked through her. And she touched people with kindness through a little needle. And her little needle opened lives so that God, the great influencer, can come and work in her lives. As you see today, forget your notes. I'm not even going to go there. God has another plan. <laughs> get your notes. Those, oh, those are pretty. I like them. They were good. I struggled over them. Yes, I remember God might even use them this morning. I want you to just notice some characteristics about Dorcas' life. Number one, she was active in her community. She was a part of her community. She's active. She's a part of it. She wasn't away from it. She couldn't be touched by it. She was touching the community as well as touching the community. <coughs> she was part of her hood. She was part of her niche. Another thing you need to know is that she was active in it. She wasn't just a part of it. She just didn't show up. But when she showed up, she was doing something. But not just doing anything. What was she known for? Helping people and her kindness. See, this is a person who, has been, who had been able to get past their own agenda, their own life, a person who has been able to stop thinking about themselves so much, but been able to then think about others more. Sometimes folks, church folks are so selfish. So selfish. We think about us first. Us second. Us last. Where's the room for everybody else? Not on our calendar. <laughs> because we think about us. How's it going to impact me? You didn't mention me. You didn't include me. What about me? And Dorcas, her life 
was about serving others, helping people, but then specifically it talked about helping poor people. Poor. Those who are not just not doing anything, but those who were in it unable to care and do for themselves. There's a whole lot of people who are able to do something for themselves, they just don't want to do it. Ooh. That's not the type of folks I'm talking about. There were people who really needed help, and she was there to help them. Then that then makes me think about another thing about her life. I wonder if at some time she had been a woman of means. The Bible really never tells us that. One of the things that we know that she looks as if, you know, there's no mention of husband, there's no mention of children, uh, but we know she had a house, and we know that her house had an upper place, and it was her house. You know, you know it, it, it's quite possible that at, at Joppa, where they were, it's quite possible that her house was the house church, that her house and her life and everything that she had was set up so that she might glorify God in everything. Is there anything that in your life that God can't have or God can't use for his glory? See, sometimes to be compassionate and to be kind, sometimes people are going to do you in. Sometimes people are going to walk on your nice, clean carpet. Can you take that? See, kindness is able to get over that. Do you think that everybody that came all of a sudden fell in love with Dorcas? She had to deal with some crazy people, some mean people, some hurt people, some wounded people. Don't you know the worst people to ever work with are people that are wounded? Because out of their woundedness, they're just, they don't know how to accept love. All they know how to do is strike out. Consider that today. When you're working with people in your hood, matter of fact, let me stop right there just for a minute. Do you know your neighbors? Do you know your neighbors? Do your neighbors know you're a believer? How would they know? Do your neighbors know you're a believer? Do your neighbors see your kindness or do your neighbors just see your list of what you don't do that you proudly brandish to the world? I'm a Christian. I don't, 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 don't. That's what we hang our hats on. And folks are wondering, what do you do? Everything is what you don't. And so God took a little needle. I don't know how long they are. That, that's a long needle, right? <laughs> that, that, maybe that's the reason why when I do find a needle, Evelyn leaves the room. Maybe that's the reason why she just don't want to see it. <laughs> I did try her sewing machine, but that's another story. I won't go to that one. Believe me, I think we had to take it to the shop. I tried it. Anyway, I was trying pick back up my little needle. But isn't it amazing that the needle then became her platform? Think about it. After she had died, they were parading what she had done, the works of her hands. Do you know that people sitting here, do you know that a little needle, you have, each one of you has a little talent and a little skill at least. Do you know that you can influence your neighborhood? Just by the little thing that God gives you. Isn't it comical? Isn't, it, isn't that the way that God works? That God doesn't give her a big talent. God just gives her a needle. And makes her good with a needle. What's the little thing that God has made you good with? There is a little thing that God has made you good with. And some of you then immediately are going to point to times in life where this didn't work out and that didn't work out and people did this and people did that. Ah, let that go. Because see, God is able to reverse things in your life. Amen. 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 Such that you can come out and do the things that you never thought you were able to do. Yep. There's this preacher that was going to, um, I think they went to Magic Mountain, he and his family. 
And you know how they were the first in line because they got there real early. Kind of, kind of reminds me of myself, you know, because we get there real early, right? First in line. So they went to this very popular ride, and they were the first in line. First in line. And you know how it is when you line up, usually people are single file. Well, as it became closer to the opening time, people started to creep. You know how people creep? Yeah. And don't you hate those people that come stand in line for eight other people? They one person, and they, but they represent eight or nine others who then want to come and be in front of you. <laughs> well, it just so happened that they were first in line, but people started to come and they noticed they got pushed a little back. See, some of y'all would fight and claw. Y'all have a fight right there. That's it. <laughs> see, that's why we need kindness. But see, what happens is that then what happened to this family is that as more and more people, again, it got close to being open, as more and more people came, they got pushed back. So much so that they got pushed all the way to the back of the line. Some of y'all sitting here, whoa, you got the heebie-jeebies right now. They got pushed to the back of the line. But let me tell you how God reverses things. The announcer come on, the person who was coordinating the ride, you know, the ride master, came on and said, thank you folks for lining up here. Now, this particular roller coaster is down today. So I want you to turn your attention behind you and now we're going to open that door. Guess where they were standing? <laughs> so just like that, God can reverse things in your life. All he's asking that you would just pick up a little needle and that you would put it to use. What is your needle? Everybody has one. Use that needle as a platform. Don't you think when she was using that needle and she was talking to other people, not only did she show other people how to do it, but then other people benefited from the relationship. So then other people were learning how to use the craft, but then other people were benefiting from the work of her hand. And because she, they saw the work of her hand and that she was a giving person, don't you know that open door for her to share as a disciple? Some of you wonder, how am I going to witness to people? you got to use your needle as a platform. Amen. You influence through small things. That's right. If not, you don't bulldoze people. You influence people. How do you influence people? Through small needles. Amen. And so, as we look at the story, I want to show you a greater thing that happened. She died. Story over? No. Pete comes. Don't know what he's going to do. Pete comes, prays. She's raised her to the dead. And we think, oh, great. Now we're going to hear more about Tabitha, about our girl Dorcas. But we don't. Do you know what you hear about? You hear about God moving and saving people in the community. Okay, okay, get this and I'll end with this. Her needle was the platform, not for herself. Because, see, when you do this, you can't be in this to get great. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some of y'all want to get out front. Now they, they need, need it. No, this isn't about that at all. This is not, this isn't the you show. Mm -hmm. It's always God's show. Yes. And so her needle was the platform, but not for herself. Her needle was the platform for God's greater work, the greatest and ultimate influencer that the world has ever known. Amen. Amen. And because of her needle, her platform, her death, being raised to life. All the Joppa heard about her story. You have a new <coughs> God said, don't despise small beginnings. You got a new Will you use it? Will you put it to use? Will you allow God to 
you use your needle. That's all he needs. And actually, it's a pretty comical thing. That's God's tendency. To feed 5,000, he used a little boy with fish and some bun buns. To feed 5,000, that's what he did. Jesus came as a little baby because small things. Small things. He takes those who are not seemingly the wise and he confounds the knowledge of the wise and uses the simple. You have a needle. You have a needle. Will you dare put that to work for God? If you use it for God, you will have a greater impact and influence than you will ever know. Here we are centuries later and we still have the Dorcas Society. I wonder if that could be the Cynthia Society or the Everett Society or the Eddie Society. I wonder if that can be the Kenny Society. We'd have to change that. It'd have to be Kenneth. Will you let God use your needle? Let's pray.